those of you who don't know me, my name's Steve, and I'm married to a triplet. Her name is Patty. And uh, we lived in Scotland for 18 years, and uh, we had a great time, helped uh, launch the, the King's Fellowship, and also it got to help launch uh, Liberty Church in Dunfermline. So it was a great time for us, did a lot of outreach. Alan was really instrumental <laughs> in helping us do so much. Actually, some of our best uh, outreaches were in Falkirk. I have, I have so many great conversations with people. Uh, from Falkirk. We're out just loving people. And uh, I remember this, this young guy we were talking to. Uh, I don't know how we got the conversation started. I think we we're doing a drama or something. And and he uh, uh, just began to talk to me. And I noticed that he was talking to me and interested. So I began to talk to him about Jesus and about his reality and who Jesus was. And uh, all of a sudden, I just really sense uh, the presence of God around us, uh, tangibly around us as we were speaking. And uh, I said, do you, do you sense this? He goes, yes, that's why I'm still talking to you. <laughs> so anyway, we had this great conversation, found, found out that his grandmother had talked to him about Jesus. And, and it was just an amazing connection. Uh, at the end, uh, he acknowledged that uh, he thought he might w want to know more about Jesus. And uh, I asked him, is there anything I can pray with you about? And uh, he said, yeah, I have a sore tooth. Uh, would you pray for me that the, the pain would go away? And I said, okay, that'd be great. And so I got permission to put my hand on his cheek, you know, just for contact where it was. And just simply prayed a simple prayer. It's a pain go, healing flow. Lord, we just command pain to go. In Jesus' name, bring healing to this young man. And then I just kind of went for it sneakily at the end. <laughs> Lord, open up his eyes, open up his heart that he might know you. And uh, it was great uh, time of prayer. And so to his surprise, the pain went away in his uh in his tooth. And he wasn't quite ready to receive Jesus at that time, but it was just a seed uh, that uh, I was able to sow. I also wrote, wrote a book when I was in Scotland for explaining, uh, it's called Explaining Evangelism. I wrote it for Sovereign World International. Surprise, surprise, I actually published it. And uh, the funny thing about them publishing the book was uh, it, 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 they published it with not even looking at the manuscripts. <laughs> There were errors all through the book. So anyway, a few years ago, the Lord challenged me to rewrite it. So I did. And the name of the book is called Go So. And uh, it talks about the practical stories, tips, and helps toward outward focus living. And a lot, a lot of what I learned in Scotland went in this book without my experiences there with Youth with a Mission when I first went over and hanging out with uh, the churches in uh, in Scotland. I would have never been able to uh pen this uh this book with some help hopefully some helpful information so i mean you can grab it if uh, you're interested uh that would be super uh the other thing uh that uh, one th one of the things that alan asked me to do today not another thing but the the thing alan asked me to do today was to talk about this word and uh it's the the word of kindness you know this whole big word that uh, looms it's a part of the fruit of the spirit love joy peace patience kindness i think it's interesting that Patience and kindness are there together. It's in another place in the Bible, in uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient and love is kind. And I think that really defines what love is. Love is an action word. And I believe that it's summed up in just those two words. Love is patient and love is kind. And uh, I found in my life, whenever I become impatient, what happens to me is that uh, my kindness goes down. <laughs> And uh, especially you know, around people that I know well, or I'm in the church doing stuff, and I'm task focused instead of being patient. And and when my patience goes down, sometimes what happens is my kindness go, goes out the door. So it's important to remember that love is love is patient, and love is kindness. And uh, I mentioned uh, to Alan, I think he may have shared it with you about this whole uh, word that I, I've. Uh, uh, not discover, but but really spoke to me, especially over the last few years, about the intentionality of the Father's heart and uh, how he's so intentional to reach us. It says that God so loved the world, that's us, and this cosmos. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. He's intentional. He uh, gave us uh, in Ephesians uh, chapter one, it talks about the, the kindness and the kind intention of his will. He saved us according to the kind intention 
of his will. Uh, Titus talks about when the kindness and goodness of God appeared. That's Jesus. He saved us, not according to works that we have done, but according to his mercy. He's lavished his love upon us, upon us and he's lavished his love upon us intentionally. In other words, we weren't a mistake. And when he looked uh, through the, the centuries to see you here, he was very intentional for you. That he looked at you and he saw you and he says, I want to express my intentionality to you through my son, Jesus. And so that's true of every person that's ever lived, that uh, God's intentionality was toward them. Uh, there's nothing more he could have done. There's nothing more he could have uh, been able to show or reveal uh, to show his intentionality and his kindness except through his son, Jesus. If you remember Jesus, you know, he, he came, he came, he says this, uh, Jesus went about, Jesus went about doing good and healing all those who were afflicted of the enemy. And when he, he came to this planet, he was as, just as intentional as his father was. He knew his mission. He knew that he was going to go to the cross. One por portion of scripture says that Jesus set his face like flint. In other words, totally determined to fulfill the Father's will for you and for me. And there's no nothing more intentional, nothing more loving uh, could the Father do, nor Jesus do, than to give up his life and to give up his son so that we might know him. And so that's, that's so important, that word intentionality. I have never spoken to someone or have been kind to someone without some intentionality of my heart making a decision uh, to go and to uh, talk to a person. I remember a time we uh, went down to uh, a church. I was part of the Vineyard Church for a long time. And uh, we had a, a, a breakfast that we would feed uh, lots of people. About 150 people would come in every Thursday morning for breakfast. And I, I can't tell you how many lessons I learned just by being intentional to go to that breakfast, getting up, saying, I'm going to the breakfast, and I'm going to be kind to people today, to listen to their story, and to express the heart and the goodness of God uh, to the people who were here. I remember one time I went, when we went, uh, there was a, a young young guy there, African-American guy, and I was, sat down and started talking to him. And such an interesting story. Uh, after Katrina, which was a huge hurricane that hit the United States, a lot of the homes, uh, they were knocked off their foundations, their slabs. America just pours a pad of concrete and then uh, builds the home on the concrete. Well, when Katrina came, it just wiped out suburbs uh, of those kind of homes. They just slid off the foundation and were just destroyed. And so after they cleaned up everything, uh, his job was to go back into the slabs to wear uh, a hazmat suit in, in the sun <laughs> in, uh, in, down in New Orleans area where it's very hot and to cap all of the uh, uh, pipes, the water pipes and the gas pipes of every slab. And he went down there. He said he felt like he wanted to give back. He made very good money. He wanted to give back. Well, at the end of the conversation, uh, it was interesting because I said, thank you, sir, so much uh, for talking to me today. And he says, oh, no, oh, no. And he reached out his hand and grabbed my hand. And he says, thank you. Thank you so much for listening. And, you know, listening is part of being kind. And uh, we have to practice uh, that that whole deal of uh, of of being kind to other people, just like uh, uh, we do with everything else. Practice doesn't make us perfect, but it certainly uh, makes us better. Uh, the other thing about kindness, uh, I believe, to the church, you know, especially for the church, uh, just as God uh, revealed His kindness through His Son, so in the church there there needs to be a, uh, happen a prophetic revealing, a prophetic revealing. So. What, what does that mean? Well, per, per, to be prophetic simply means to reveal truth or to reveal light, uh, to reveal encouragement, to reveal comfort or exhortation to another person. It's an unveiling of, uh, of a truth. And so the church's responsibility in, the, in these days since Jesus has been here is to bend to be a prophetic church, to create God's space or the space in our lives with the tangibility of God and his presence goes with us as we go out to unveil to our world who Jesus is. And there's no better way of doing that than revealing the goodness and kindness of God through acts of mercy and acts of grace and acts of kindness. That's what unveils the church to our world. 
In other words, it, uh, revealing kindness or going out expressing kindness and good deeds to our world is really an unveiling, removing moving, uh, uh, clutter from people's eyes so they may see clearly who the Father is, that he is kind. <laughs> and uh, Scripture does talk about how the, the Father is kind. Matter of fact, in Jeremiah, my, one of my favorite scriptures, 9, uh, 23 through 24, talks about, says this, don't let a, a, a man boast in this, and he lists the list, and he says, but let a man boast in this, that he knows me and understands me, that I am the Lord God who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness in the earth. I mean, that's pretty powerful. It's the law of first thing that, of, of, that we find in Scripture many times. It's the first word that God wants to reveal. He's the God who exercises what? Kindness to us in the world. David understood it. David understood that God was a kind God, as did a lot of other uh, biblical characters who uh, were real and who understood the kindness and goodness of God. After David's horrific sin with Bathsheba and the murder of Uriah, him covering it up and being a king who should have been out to war and decided not to, made a bad choice, uh, you know, he when he was exposed, the only thing he knew to do was to throw himself on the kindness of God that he had already experienced. And so uh, uh, Psalm 51 says this, according to your loving kindness, O God, have mercy on me. Then he went through the whole Psalm, created me a clean heart. He went on all the way through the Psalm, but it was based upon his knowledge and understanding of God, of who God was. So first of all, God was a God who exercises kindness. The psalmist also says the loving kindness of the Lord is new every morning. And so we as people, we've experienced the kindness and goodness of God through Jesus. That's Titus talks about when the kindness and goodness of God appeared. That was Jesus. He saved us. God saved us through his son. He exercised kindness through his son to save us and to have mercy upon us. And so because we've experienced the mercy and goodness of God, what God wants to do through us is to Give kindness and the goodness of God to others. And so you can do that through so many uh, different ways. Uh, there's there's no limit <laughs> to how you can uh, express God's kindness and reveal him to your world. And it's really great that uh, when we do it together, you know, Jesus says that uh, you are the light of the world. And uh, when he was saying you are the light of the world, that was plural. He was saying all of you are the light of the world. And that uh, what we're supposed to do, it says in that scripture, it talks about let our good deeds shine before men in such a way that they'll acknowledge God, that God was good. And so God encourages us to be a church together who goes out and to exhibit the good news to other people in our community. There's no other way of expressing uh, love. Love is, good, is kind and love is patient, except through good deeds and uh, uh, the love that we show through our acts of kindness and good deeds. Uh, I read a great, great um, uh, article in the Dunfermline paper about the Vine Church and how they uh, said, how can we uh, reach our community during this crazy pandemic? What can we do uh, to express God's kindness and love to our community? And they came up with a great plan. They were going to serve uh, boxed uh, lunches uh, of food uh, to the people in their com community. And at the end of the day, it was thousands of people they touched. And uh, it was such a great uh, thing that they did that not only did the newspaper recognize it, but city government recognized it. The Divine Church stepped out of their, their <laughs> probably their fear and their insecurity, believe me, during COVID, to step into God's goodness and his kindness uh, to reveal his kindness uh, through them to the people of their world. And there's so many different ways uh, that you, you can do do this. Uh, in, in my book, I talk a lot about uh, the seeds. And one of the seeds was to serve others. Good deeds creates goodwill that opens hearts to uh, good the good news. And then here's a quote from, from me that I wrote. The focused power of God's love expressed through our acts of kindness often opens hearts to the good news. Our good deeds reflects God's love for an individual and for our community in a tangible way. That's how it happens. Uh, yesterday, give me an example. Uh, yesterday, we went out as a church, the upper room. It's just an amazing church, about 200 people. 
Uh, it's one of the churches that believes in signs and wonders. A lot of fun. They love worship. It's called the Upper Room Worship Center in Tip City. And our focus is really glorifying God and honoring him uh, through our worship, which includes everything we do, trying to be intentional at home and our jobs to be uh, a, a revealing of, of God's goodness and truth to our community. So anyway, to make a long story short, we plan uh, planned, intentional uh, ventures out into the community. Sometimes we'll do kindness to go. We'll, we'll create some uh, nice looking uh, gift bags, appreciation bags with small cards in, in the bag uh, to take to people and uh, to uh, businesses. And uh, one lady, she uh, took uh, uh, one of the bags home and she put it by her door and uh, waiting to see what the Lord was gonna gonna say to her about the bag. She'd done it enough that she wanted to wait on the Lord, so she did. And that morning she woke up and uh, she was gonna go to the store and felt like that she needed to take uh, the gift bag, the appreciation bag to her store. So she did. And she went through the whole store trying to figure out who she's supposed to give it to. Nothing, nothing. She's heading up to uh, the cash register. She just said, okay, Laura, what number? Because <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, up to 10 cash registers. And she felt like the Lord said three. <laughs> so she went up the cash register three and put all of her groceries on the conveyor belt. You know, they're all going down and the lady's checking them out. And uh, so then she put the bag at the very end of the uh, of the conveyor belt. And when the bag got to the lady, the lady said, what is this? And the lady says, well, you know, uh, I really felt like this morning when I got up, I needed to bring this bag to give to someone because God wanted them to know that he loved them. <laughs> and as soon as she said that, the lady started crying and said, oh, I had such a bad week and just went in, just unloaded everything that she was going through. And so the lady was able to share uh, her, her, you know, just who Jesus was with her and uh, prayed for her, prayed for her. And uh, that small act of kindness really opened the door for the tangible presence of God to touch her. So we do that, that kind of stuff, uh, which is really a whole lot of, a lot of fun. And uh, back to yesterday, we went out uh, to wash car windshields at filling stations. We get permission, hey, can we wash uh, windshields at your uh, filling stations, community service project? We're just going to love on people. And so yesterday, we went out just to do that, love on people, pray with people, wash their windshields. And so it was, we did that. And then we had a whole other team went out and gave away uh, wrapped, uh, almost professionally wrapped, we wrapped them, uh, single car nations went out into community to the beauty salons because our mother's day was uh, uh day before yesterday and so uh they went out and they just had a wonderful time with the flowers people were so overwhelmed about it one lady uh came to church on sunday because on saturday uh, the girls went into the laundromat and just began to love on people giving away car nations to mothers and and a lady responded and says, I, I want to come to your church. So she did. She came came yesterday, which was really cool. But anyway, we're at the filling station. And the first guy was there. He was like six foot three. He had white hair and he had a big white beard. And uh, he was uh, uh, getting ready to get in his big, cool Ford truck. And, and so the guy stopped him and said, hey, man, said uh, we're just uh, washing windshields. Want us to wash your windshield? He said, yeah, that'd be great. So he washed the windshield. He said, why are you doing this? He said, oh, we're out here just showing God's love. And here's $5 to help you with your gas. The guy said, oh, man, I really appreciate that. So at the end of, uh, the, end of uh, our, the conversation with the guy, he said, hey, is there anything we can pray about? He joked back, says, yeah, man, I'm going to go mow the ballpark for my kid's uh, softball team. Uh, pray I don't cut my feet off. <laughs> and so they had a big laugh. But anyway, his wife had just happened to come out at that time and heard what was going on. And she gently pulled one of our team members away and says, hey, uh, pray for his chest. He has a mass in his chest and they don't know what it is so please pray for him and, and so the thinking young uh, uh young guy there says hey can i just pray with you we'll agree right now that uh, god will touch his chest and let me tell you that was so significant because we were doing this because we were celebrating mother's day and so that was so cleaning up yesterday and uh, uh what we do at the filling station we we change out all the trash bins and we pick up all the trash in the grassy areas and so we did that and so uh, we, we came upon uh, three pieces of paper that looked really different. And we knew, I knew immediately what they were. They were postage stamps, three full pages of poster stamps. 
I couldn't believe it. You know, it's like 50 bucks right there. It's three, four pages of postage stamps. But the cool thing is it was found on the day we're going out expressing God's love in a practical way. And we found these forever love <laughs> postage stamps. And yesterday we were handing out flowers and two of the sheets had flowers on them. <laughs> and it was so funny. Uh, we picked them up and we said, God, you have a sense of humor. Uh, you are giving us uh, your stamp of approval <laughs> for us going out. Anyway, I know I've rambled on. I probably haven't hit everything that uh, Alan wanted me to hit, but it's done this over and over and over again. And I would encourage you, you know, just to be inten intentional in your day. Last thing I'd like to say is what we heard in one of our messages from Pastor Nicole. And she talked about just being open for business just making sure that we have awareness about our lives and so that we are we are very open uh, to hear God's voice so that he can uh, arrest our attention to be able to bring heaven to earth in the people's lives that we uh, connect with. Anyway, that's what, what I wanted to share with you guys today. I'll be editing this today and uh, just so much appreciate um, just my time in Scotland, oh my gosh, you know, I look look back on those years. And to be honest, I, at sometimes when you get older like me, I'll be, be 70 in January. When you get, get old like me, you look back and say, you know, maybe I should have stuck around just another couple of years there. I think that would have been a good thing to do. <laughs> anyway, God bless you guys. I hope you have a great day. Alan can uh, walk you through, uh, answer your questions. And if you'd like one of my books, man, just uh, email me and uh, I'll send you one, you know, unless there's a couple hundred of you. I probably won't. <laughs> See you later.